All right, mofos, welcome to your 57th biology lesson. And in this lesson, we're going to be picking up where you left off with metaphase 2. So remember, right now, we still have two cells. And the key things or key aspects of metaphase 2 is that during metaphase 2, what's going to happen is your spindles are going to attach to the centromeres of your chromosomes. So let me go ahead and draw these chromosomes first. And let me get a little bit bigger brush size so you guys can see. So I'll draw a really simple ones. So there's some chromosomes and there are some chromosomes. And remember, each of these single things are a chromosome. They just have two sister chromatid joined by a centromere. So remember that these are still diverse. Every single chromatid is unique to one another. So I'll draw my little, you know, DNA genetic information scattered in there in pink and basically remember that I said that the spindles are now gonna attach to the centromeres of your chromosomes and let me draw it on this cell too so here are the spindles and they're attaching to the centromeres right there and another cool thing is that as you can see the sister chromatid are actually going to line up in the middle or the equator of the cell. So those are the two key aspects of metaphase 2. If you only have to remember two things is that the spindles attach to the centromeres of the chromosomes and also the sister chromatid are going to line up in the middle or the equator of the cell. So after this we move on to anaphase 2. So anaphase 2 Let me go ahead and actually draw my cell before I start talking, or my two cells. So let me go ahead and draw one right here. Pretty freaking sweet looking cell. Just kidding, that's actually one of the worst diagrams I've ever drew. And okay, so we have some deformed looking cells right here, but good enough. Who freaking cares how good they look? So now actually let me draw my chromatid. And remember that even though I'm only drawing four chromatid in each one, remember that each of these cells have 23 chromosomes and two chromatid per chromosome. So we actually have 46 chromatid per cell as of now. So even though I'm only drawing four, we actually have 46 of these. I just thought it wouldn't be a good idea if you guys, you know, sat here and watched me drew 46 of these things. So basically, you see what's going on already is your spindles are gonna pull apart your chromosomes and you're pretty much are gonna your sister chromatids are gonna break right at the centromeres so here are your spindles they succeeded in pulling apart the chromosomes and the area that they break at is right in the middle right at the centromere of the chromosome so they split perfectly in half essentially and another thing that's noteworthy is that these chromatid are actually going to move to opposite ends of the cell so you guys can probably guess what's going to happen from here but those are the key phases from anaphase 2 remember one the centromeres are going to break and the sister chromatids are separated and also the chromatids are going to move to opposite ends or poles of the cell so after this we move on to the last phase or stage of meiosis 2 which is telophase 2. So at the end of telophase 2 and this is actually a really easy diagram to draw because I'm gonna uh, draw these right at the end of cytokinesis we end up with four sperm cells or four egg cells hopefully you don't have both in your body so basically what's going to happen is the spindles are going to completely disappear and our nuclear membrane is going to form again in all the cells bam bam and another thing that's going to happen is your chromosomes are going to spread out around the nucleus so here we go here's some chromosomes DNA spreading out in there and also draw some chromosomes in this color too so essentially what's going to happen is at the end of meiosis 2 at the end of telophase 2 same thing first of all like I said the spindles we no longer have those they're going to disappear we don't need them anymore we're done with them another thing is that the nuclear membrane is going to form in all of these four cells and your chromosomes are going to spread out just like I said now a couple other key things we want to take away is at the end of cytokinesis you have four haploid daughter cells 
So four haploid daughter cells. Now remember I said that diploid had 46 chromosomes or two sets of chromosomes and haploid pretty much means one set or 23 chromosomes. So just remember that at the beginning of meiosis, at the very beginning of meiosis 1, we started with one diploid cell. One cell with 46 chromosomes or two sets of chromosomes. And at the end, we ended up with four haploid cells or four cells with 23 chromosomes. So that's basically the entire process of meiosis, meiosis 1, meiosis 2. Pretty freaking cool. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.